Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and one of the many reasons that I wanted to get an offset is for that extra space. If you put all the time, energy, and effort to running a fire all day, you want enough yield to be able to feed all of your friends and family. And on my Generation 1 Carlisle, I could fit four to five racks of ribs depending on the size, but the Generation 2 not only grows in size, we now have an optional rib rack, which should, in theory, double our capacity. Well, today I'm putting that theory to the test. We're gonna load up the Generation 2 Carlisle by Smoke North to see how many racks of ribs we can cook. Without further ado, Let's fire it up. So what used to work really well in my generation one Carlisle is using something like this grocery store kiln dried birch wood. Uh, this is a great way to get our fire going because it's really easy to light. It'll combust quickly and it'll help get our offset heat soaked and up to temperature. As you can tell, it's a nice cool day here in the great white north. And so since we've gained about another 150 pounds or so in total raw steel weight, I think we're somewhere around 850 pounds, I want to get a really hot fire. It's okay if it even shoots up four or 500 degrees. And as it settles down, that's when I'm going to switch from this grocery store wood to something like oak for today's rib cook. Let's break this down into a smaller splits, start our fire. All right, let's fire it up. Okay, let's add in our water pan so it can preheat as well while the pit's coming up to temperature. Close that up. Let's go work on our ribs. Oh. If this fits, this will be the most number of racks and weight of ribs that I've cooked in a single smoker in my backyard. So this is about 10 racks of St. Louis ribs and just shy of 40 pounds total. So uh, what the game plan is, if these don't fit, I wanted to have enough to really stress test and load up the Carlisle to see what it could fit. But if these don't fit, uh, what we'll do is we'll get them ready, season them up, and I'll just freeze, uh, vac seal and freeze those for another day. But I really wanted to see what we can get. And since I already know from testing with data that the cook temperature range left to right, uh, so collector to firebox and up and down is very close. Left and right was within one degree of each other and up and down uh, was a maximum of about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Height. So I'm not worried about the evenness of the cook chamber. Uh, what we're going to find out today is just how much we can fit in there. So I've got a little bit of a rub uh, tweak that I'm going to make to my normal sort of salt, pepper, garlic that goes great with St. Louis ribs. So let's start getting these out of the package. I'll show you how to make up that rub. Take it fast forward uh, while I get everything ready and meet you back over by the pit. So let's get started with our salt and pepper. So I'm going to quickly use my pepper cannon, grind up a couple capfuls of fresh cracked black pepper. This makes a big difference. You don't need to use the uh, pepper cannon. You can use a burr mill, coffee grinder, anything like this. But I like the adjustability of the coarseness. Uh, and it is so much quicker than my old uh, pepper mill. So I'll take it fast forward while I get two capfuls of pepper. So there we are. There's our first cap. Let's add that. Take it fast forward. Do the next cap. Go, let's add that in. Next, I'm gonna go for one cap of diamond crystal kosher salt, and then about one third more cap full of diamond crystal. And the remaining two thirds I'll do Lowry's. If you can't find Lowry's, I'll put a, a, a copycat imitation rub recipe down below that you can make this really quickly at home and get the same result. The ratios are just a little bit different, so that'll be at the bottom of the description. Okay, so now we are two capfuls of pepper and essentially two capfuls of salt. So we're 50-50 salt and pepper at this point. And for a little bit of color, what I'm going to do is just add some paprika. This would be about a quarter cap. Some cayenne would be equally fine. Some garlic. And going for about a half cap of onion today. Give this a good mix and our rub is ready. I'll clean this up and we'll start getting these out and get this rub on. All right, we've got all of our ribs out ready to go. So I've just grabbed a little bit of yellow mustard as a binder. We have our rub. I'll take you fast forward while we get these ready, get them on trays, take them over to our pit. Let's get started on our mop sauce. For our mop, Dollar Store sells these for about a buck, so we'll use that in a little bit. I'm gonna start with a half stick of butter. Get our conduction oven on here. Next, we'll do a quick rough chop on our onion. Okay, next, let's get to work on our garlic, get the skins off. So for the ones where the skin didn't come off that we could throw in, we'll just take the heel of our knife here, help that release. Take you fast forward while I get the skins off the rest of these and into the pot. We're not gonna break those down any further. So now that our onions and garlic are starting to get translucent and render down, we can get to work adding the rest of our ingredients. 
If you have uh, mustard powder already, you can do that. I don't have any, but I have some mustard seed from a previous recipe. I add this uh, to recipes all the time. So I've just emptied out my pepper cannon. I'm gonna add some mustard seed and make some of my own really quickly. There we go, grind that up. There we go, some quick mustard powder. Put back what we didn't use for the seeds. Add my peppercorns back, grind up some pepper. It's just a little bit less. It's actually a fair bit less than about a tablespoon if we were measuring. This is uh, Malden smoked sea salt. A little bit of garlic powder. We've got garlic in there, so we don't need too much. This will be about a teaspoon. Again, about a teaspoon. Juice of a lime. Sorry, I'm colorblind. Juice of a lemon. The sauce that everybody, myself included, can't pronounce. A little bit of Worcester. A little bit of hot sauce. Ketchup. We'll need a little bit more ketchup, so I'll, I'll get that off camera and add that, but just a little bit of beer. Let this simmer down for about 15, 20 minutes, and we are ready to start mopping. I'll meet you over by the pits. All right, let me know your guess in the comments below how many are gonna fit. Let me just move these ones out of the way so I can get in. Let's start with our upper rack. Okay, we're five up top. Well, I should have said my guess. I didn't think we would get all 10 in there. Let's get this closed up and go check out our fire. Okay, so our fire's still burning nice and clean. Gonna take advantage of our semi-insulated firebox and load up our next couple splits right there on top. Try and keep them out of the way of the fire. And because our firebox is growing to 24 inches, I'm now able to fit two splits on each side. Always keep those nice and warm, ready to go. I'll rejoin you in a little bit. Once this uh, split burns down, we're ready to add another one. So I can show you the difference that this makes in terms of preheating and how quick they catch once they, uh, we add them into our fire. Okay, our fire started to die down. So let's get some of these splits that we've got preheating. I'll show you here real time how they catch. Let's place two like this on the bottom. And I'm gonna place one on top. Now there's a bit of a method to your madness here. If you place the one on top to knock your fire down like this and the air's coming in, you're gonna block it. So I find you get a bit of a better result just laying it across just like this. So the airflow still can come in and get underneath these splits here. I'll just rearrange that a little bit. Perfect. And you can see even in the time of just us talking here and fussing with uh, getting our splits in, all three have started to combust just like that. So I'll add in a couple more. See you a little bit later on. So this uh, compared to the last couple of experiments I did early in the year on my Oklahoma Joes as a really small offset uh, where you almost need a PhD in fire management in order to keep a really nice clean burning fire in a tight range uh, has taken a complete novice with no fire management experience and instructions just to set a timer and add two splits and it's continued along and the ribs are looking beautiful. But in that uh, conversation, my wife asked, James, like, what's your game plan here with 10 racks of ribs? I didn't know we would actually fit that much. And so we started finding, you know, friends, family, neighbors that we can give these away. There's a lot uh, to give away. And since we're giving them away, this is, uh, we want to put best foot forward. So I just took a quick minute to whip up some Snows inspired Texas mop sauce. If you haven't seen how to do that, I'll put a chapter right after this uh, once we're going to get that on. But this is just going to add a whole extra layer of flavor. I did that on the pulled pork and a lot of things recently because it is is absolutely worth doing. If you don't try it, you're going to want to uh, do this. So I've already got that uh, made up and ready and it's just simmering along ever so gently on our flat top firebox, which I knew would in theory would be good and in practice it's even better. So let's come nice and close. We'll start uh, by flipping our ribs upside down, get some mop sauce on the bottom so that we rehydrate uh, that and then we'll get some mop sauce uh, flipping back over for the presentation side as we start to approach the finish line on our 10 racks of ribs. And after pulling that rib rack out and having the mop sauce, this is why stainless is a good idea. Is I can just give that a quick wipe and get some of these greases and oils off of our fold up shelf here. I still like the look of wood, but that makes a ton of sense. 
Well, daylight is fading on me fast. I should point that out, that really the only difference between in this cook and any other smaller capacity rib cook that I've done on my offset is that we've added about 10% of our time, and that's about the 10% of the daylight that we need, but they are looking and smelling awesome. So the game plan is uh, to get these off. I'll show them to you a really quick, get some pictures video so you can see what they all look like. And I'm gonna run them inside so they don't cool off. And uh, that is actually the most difficult part of this cook, which is finding a whole bunch of people to help take advantage of these ribs while they're nice and fresh. And 10 racks is more than my family of four uh, can take down. So I'll rejoin you in a couple minutes, show you what they look like. We'll do a taste test with one rack outside and see how our first cook at max capacity in the generation two Carlisle has gone. See you in a couple minutes, over for the taste test. Not gonna lie, I am very happy I did not just drop 40 pounds of ribs plus a cutting board on my way in, but I saved what looks like a really pretty rack. So let's flip this over, cut out a couple bones, see how we did. Great looking smoke ring, that is crazy. Juicy, just looking ready to come out. I don't wanna squeeze it all out because I actually wanna eat that. Let me get the camera up and we'll dig in. All right, cheers, let's see how we did. Lights out. Normally, sometimes you have to go for a couple more bites to pick up everything. But just let me walk you through what is immediately a symphony of flavors in my mouth. So the first couple of things that I'm getting is our rub, like the salt, the pepper. The seasoning is right on point. But that mop sauce has just added a depth of sweet heat it is so welcome. Now I should mention, um, you can control the level of hot sauce and the heat. And since these 10 racks are going to a number of different neighbors and family, I went really mild on the sauce if it was just me. Uh, so this is maybe a little bit light on the spice, uh, but 100% uh, family friendly for kids of all ages. Go for another bite here. Wow. The smoke, the, this is why you have an offset. Uh, and if you don't have an offset, it is great to find somebody who has one just as a benchmark for your cooking. It's so easy to get pulled into a certain smoke profile, but this is the gold standard and the one that I try and take tips and techniques, no matter what type of uh, grill or Kamado or smoker that I'm using to replicate this, because this is like the money shot of smoke. It is absolutely on point. I hope you really enjoyed hanging out with me today and putting our Gen 2 Carlisle to the stress test at 85 gallons. This is a lot more capacity. I was down to about four to five racks of ribs and the generation one was the most that I could get in. And here at 10 uh, wide St. Louis cuts, these are wider than baby backs, so maybe we can fit a couple more. I am really pleased with how this came together. Let me know what else you'd like to see down in the comments below, either on the Gen 2 Carlisle or the big brother, the Huron, and I'll be sure to add that to the spring recording list. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoke and Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Thank you